In this video, I wanted to explain and uh, using this example of uh, what we created in the previous video with the diagram. So here, first, we are importing render and fire event. And render is used in every component at the start, uh, in every test case, at the beginning we are doing render. And essentially what we are doing with render uh, we are just uh, rendering the whole component three and we are getting back these queries that we could query uh, query the component three by and here we are also using fire importing fire event and here with fire event uh, we are just using it to change some text inside the input press the button or stuff like that so uh, stuff that user would typically do and then we are importing the login screen component and we are describing so here inside of our diagram um, this is our login screen component and we are describing so we are using describe and we are setting the login screen uh, that is the name of the component we are going to test and here for every test case we have this it should have should 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 so it uh, is representing each test case and here uh, let's go over this these test cases so here should have the submit button disabled if inputs are empty and uh, initially inputs are empty we are using get by test ID so that is the query and here get by test ID submit button so we are getting it by test ID and essentially in our component on our screen touch we should have touchable opacity for example which will have attribute of test id is equal to submit button so for example we should have a component like this touchable opacity or touchable highlight or pressable which has a test id of submit button we are getting it by test id and we expect that button so we are passing that button element to the expect we expect that to be disabled so to have attribute disabled set to true and we could do that by for example programmatically doing um, username dot length and and password dot length so here if username is bigger than zero and password length is also bigger than zero, it will return true. Actually, uh, it should return false. So it should not be disabled. So we are just going to do exclamation mark. So if username length is bigger than zero and password length is bigger than zero, uh, it will be true. And we don't want it to be disabled but if username length for example is zero and password length is two it will return false and exclamation mark will make it through and it will be disabled because username input is empty and that's what we want okay now the next test case should show an error if login is attempted with empty fields here we are also getting by test ID, but we are also getting by text as well. So for example, here, now if we have text element, um, and inside of that text, uh, we have some text. So instead of assigning uh, the test ID to this field, uh, to this element, we are just going to query by text. So get by test ID, we'll look what's inside of the test ID attribute. And if it matches, uh, it will grab this element, but get by text will essentially look uh, what's, what's inside these texts. So what's, what is the text between these, uh, these uh, fin, uh, opening and closing tag. And if it matches, it will also grab it. So here, uh, we are getting the button by test ID, essentially what we did in the previous test case. Then we are simulating press on that button. 
and since uh, input fields are empty, we are expecting error message to occur. With this username and password cannot be empty. You can, you know, have wh whatever you want, uh, whatever you had in your component, and we expect error message to be truthy. Here we did get by text, um, and we usually you do get by text when we are sure that that exists. To be truthy means to exist essentially. And here, essentially, what we could do instead of get by text, we could do query by text. So here we are using query by text if we are not sure that these uh, this uh, component exists. And here, get by text will return true or false, or it will return the element if it not, does not exist. And it will th not throw an error. That is the main difference because get by test ID assumes that that component, that element exists, and it will throw an error if it doesn't. And here we are checking if it does exist. Uh, one more thing, uh, since here we are using fire event press, um, fire event press, and it will trigger, for example, it will trigger the function that needs to authenticate the user. So here, um, let's have pressable. Pressable, and we have on press uh, auth function. And here, uh, this uh, fire event press will press uh, will trigger on press event, which is an auth function, uh, which essentially most of the time is good enough. Um, but here, uh, uh, there is a new way to do it, and uh, that that is called press. So press just as a method and uh, it can be created by doing const user, user is equal to user event. So instead of importing fire event, we want to import user event and user event dot setup. So we are setting up the user and the weight user dot press and then we are providing the elements. So for example, this submit button that we are getting by test ID and what it does uh, compared to the fire event press is uh, this fire event press only simulates on press. So if we have pressable on press that auth function, it will trigger this event but with uh, with here with this event user dot press with from the user event api so not fire event api but user event api we can um we can also trigger all the events that are being triggered in the react native runtime uh, that include for example properties that are press in and press out that will allow us to have much bigger control of our components so for example we just we don't want to have control on what is happening when we press the button we for example want a user to be able to press the button hold the button for some time and then on press out we want to trigger another function, for example, which we can't do with fire event dot press. So that is the example of when user dot press uh, from user event API might be useful. Okay, and we also that is our uh, second test case done. And here in the third third test case should show an error if username and password are not long enough. And essentially, we are grabbing by test ID, uh, password, and username. Um, we are doing change text. So here, we have, for example, some input, um, imp text input from React Native, and we have on change text, and we have that function, some function that essentially does nothing right now, but let's imagine we have some function and essentially that function just changes the value. So here we have 
cons the value and set um let's do username instead username and set username is equal to use state which will be an empty string and here we'll have set username and value will be username so every time uh, we change uh, the input the content of the field it is setting the new value okay we already know that using use state from react okay here we are changing text so we are simulating that event like user is typing in a b c and for password input one two three okay um and we are pressing the submit button that uh that button is being pressed with fire event as i said in a previous example you could also use uh, user event uh, to have more control over what is going on with the press in and press out uh, events and here we are using a press then we expect error message and also here uh, we could use get by text but also it will probably be better to use query by text so query by text username and password should uh, be at least x so x characters long um you you can set it whatever you want and expect error message to be through the so we expect this error message to be shown to exist in our uh, react component tree okay um one more thing that i wanted to display it's pretty similar for what we had here um, for the button for on press here we can also use since we have user event set up we can have user type and text input we are providing the text input that we found and then we are providing this text to be changed and here what is different we want to do we want to simulate uh, the real way it's done in our react native and it is typing one character at a time and then leaving the element so here we have a few options that we can also check skip press so that is the option skip press if it's true press in and press out events that we have on the input so here on this input we could have press in and press out and we could assign some functions to them if we want if we assigned a skip press to this config it will not these two events press in and press out will not be triggered and then we have another option called submit editing and if true submit editing event will be triggered after typing the test so after we type the test something can happen for example if we uh submit editing do submit editing and here we have uh when that is done through and it will trigger the event so here we are if we if we pass that submit editing here as an option um we have on submit editing i'm not sure if that is the right uh, function but uh, some function like that submit editing it will be triggered after typing the test and with what we could do here for example if this text input is acting as a search bar on submit editing when user is done typing we can trigger the function um fetch uh, news for example and when that's done we fetch the news and those are two options so skip press that if through will not trigger these two and submit editing is another function that we can use when you are using um, type from user event rather than fire event okay uh, that is our third test case then we have the fourth one should not throw an error if username and password meet the requirements so here that is what i was talking to you about um, mock login so we are mocking the function essentially uh, for example if we had 
And here we are passing login as well as mock login in our screen. Um, for example, if we have an API, for example, let's say we are using AWS Amplify, and we have the API, for example, we import API from AWS Amplify slash API, and here we are doing API post, mm. and here we have uh, auth, and we are passing username, which will be username, and password, which will be password. Okay, instead of this, here we are mocking. We are just using, and we will pass this. So in our login screen here, uh, we would pass, we would render, uh, usually we would render it like this. We have a mock, what well, we have login screen, and then login will be api.post. So we are passing, uh, api.post method from AWS but instead because we don't want to trigger an API we don't want to re register a user or trigger some action that will have permanent changes on our server and database here we are doing the mock login so passing the empty just function this function does not do anything and it cannot fail so we want to just make sure that username and input, we found them, we um, inputted, we inputted uh, the username and password, they are correct. We found the submit button, we did a press on a submit button, and we expect mock login to have been called with correct username and correct password. So here we are doing with login, we essentially would do login and we would pa paste, uh, we would go with uh, username and password. And now we just want to check, um, we want to check if it's been called with the username, uh, correct username and password, correct password one through three. And that is all we are concerned about because here is a unit test. We are just testing this component in isolation. We are not interested if it works on the server, if authentication works, if server works, if database uh, queries are set up correctly. We are not concerned about that. We are doing unit testing. We are just checking if the username and password are long enough and if, if the password is, uh, is matching the pattern, which we are checking in the next Test case, okay, and that is all, what we are all uh, we, what we are concerned about. We do not care about the server and other stuff, okay. And then the fifth test case should show an error if password does not match the pattern, okay. We are getting the username input, password input, and we are pressing, uh, we are changing the text of username and password, and we are clicking on submit button and then we uh we are submitting uh and then we want to do let's do also query by text here as well and it should display password does not match the required pattern because essentially uh we would have some regular expression to check that so in our so inside of our login uh, function const login is equal to async function and here we have a pattern. So const pattern is equal to some type of pattern uh, regex. And here we want to check uh, check if uh, there are at least two numbers, one special character, and one capital letter and we have that pattern we do pattern dot match oh uh, here we have username and password and we have password and here if it does not match so if it doesn't match we'll do set password error 
uh, what we what we have here. Okay. Uh, so here, set password error. What we have here, and essentially this component, since let's say we have password input, and below that we have password error. Okay, and this will only be displayed. So here we can do conditional rendering. So if password error, it will display the password error. And if there is no password error, it will not display. And here we'll have the password error. Okay. Password error which is essentially uh, empty at the beginning of our rendering cycle. So here we have the password error and we have set password error. Okay, use state and it is an empty string and it's different. This is not the same as our password. So we'll have password here as well and set password, okay. And initially, when we render the component, all of these two will be empty. And then, if we click on the button and the password is empty, we are going to set password error to password error here. Password does not match the required pattern or is empty. And here, or maybe we input at a password, but it does not uh, satisfy the criteria. And then, since now we set the password error here, when we try to log in and here we return because we cannot proceed uh, now password error exists so this uh, this statement is satisfied and we are rendering the password error and below our password input we are rendering the error so user knows why it failed to, to log in because password uh, is not long enough or it does not satisfy the pattern criteria and here we can also do alert that alert um, password does not satisfy the pattern okay and that is essentially what we are doing in the in our unit tests so here let's revise we have the component uh, we are describing that as a component so here we have that describe Describe lock. We are describing our component login screen, so we know uh, all of these tests belong to this group. And then we have five test cases, which we all which all begin with it. Then we describe what we are testing. Uh, we are rendering the component, which returns our contents tree, our React tree, and helpers queries to query the component tree by. Then we get those components, we do some typing, pressing, uh, simulating, all of that, and then we expect some, uh, some sort of change to happen and expect it, uh, and we are testing if what's happening is what we expect to happen, okay? I hope that's clear. See you in the next one.